Jamal Murray gets a max extension. So Jamal Murray just signed a $208 million contract to stay with the Denver Nuggets. And this comes right after the report that came out the other day about the conflict between the front office and the coaching staff. So now we have this to add on to the Denver story. And while this is not breaking news in the sense that we probably all or most of us expected him to get an extension, but at the same time, this does kind of add on to that potential conflict between the front office and the coaching staff. So why am I saying that? How does this add on? It has nothing to do with Jamal Murray specifically. Like I said, we most of us expected him to get an extension. It's not, it's not anything out of the ordinary. Like, this is not shocking. But I talked about the report in the video I did the other day, and there are no, at least to my knowledge, like, not a ton of, you know, details and stuff like that. So we don't know specifically what the issue is. I said my assumption with, you know, no facts or anything like that, just an assumption is that there is a conflict on who should be on the roster and who should be paid and which players they should bring in. Like that's the kind of conflict I'm assuming is happening between the front office and the coaching staff. So the reason that this adds on to the story is because by giving Jamal Murray the max extension, you are basically saying, we are still trying to be a championship contender next season with Jamal Murray, with Jokic, and we think that with the roster we have, we can still be a championship contender. By giving him this max extension, it really doesn't give them much financial flexibility moving forward because we know the new CBA rules just make everything so difficult. And when you have somebody making that kind of money like Jamal Murray is, and Jokic, and you still have Michael Porter Jr. making max, if not close to max money, like it's gonna get a little bit tight. And you already lost KCP this off season prior to that, Bruce Brown and Jeff Green. The bench is thin, and it's, it's kind of boiling down to their big three, if you wanna call it that. I'm not saying Jamal Murray, Jokic, and Michael Porter Jr. is a big three, but that's basically where all their money is going now. So you have to build out the roster from there and it's getting more and more difficult to do that. If it doesn't work out this season after they just paid Jamal Murray the max money and Michael Porter Jr. must have at least two years left on his deal, obviously Jokic is not going anywhere regardless of how much money he makes. <laughs> but like, and I don't think Jamal Murray is being traded either. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, you're going to have three players on big money and this will be the second year in a row while they're in their primes that they don't have potential success. So what happens if Denver gets knocked out in the first round this year? What do they do in the off season? Because they don't have money to go out and give to a player to like, they can't bring in someone and give them 15 million a year. At least to my knowledge, I don't think their cap room would allow it. I feel like while the Jamal Murray extension itself is not shocking, not surprising, not a big deal, and not, it's not like Jamal Murray didn't earn the bag, right? It literally has nothing to do with Jamal Murray specifically, but to me, this literally puts them in more of a constraint among the roster. Again, they had to do it, they were going to do it, and Jamal Murray and Jokic fit really well together, so like, there is no issue there. But when you lost three key players on your championship roster and you haven't replaced any of the three of them yet and you're not getting any more money now to go out and replace them, it's looking a little scary for Denver. This is also why it's really hard to be back-to-back -back champions, to win multiple championships, especially with the same roster or majority of the same roster, really, because, like, there are so many things that happen. Players leave, like Denver had. Financial issues, uh, maybe chemistry issues, like, not necessarily on this team. We haven't heard chemistry issues, but I'm just saying, like, things happen, and that's why, like, being a dynasty is really not that easy. And it's, like, a little ironic, because when they won their first ring, 
there was not a lot. I'm not saying like everybody was talking about this, but I do remember hearing a few people saying like, this could be the next dynasty, which I thought was a little premature because they only won one ring <laughs> at that point. And not that they didn't deserve it or earn it. And they definitely like played for that ring. Like they earned that ring. But dynasty is a category that only few teams get put into. I'm just saying this exemplifies how hard it is to be a dynasty when after they won the first ring, people were talking about, some people were talking about how they could be because obviously with the age group of Jokic, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, even though he's like a little bit older, but still like he's not, he's not old. And then Michael Porter Jr., like the age group fit the timeline to potentially be a dynasty from that standpoint because they were young enough to have multiple years to make championship runs. But like I said, all those issues or things that could happen have happened to Denver, unfortunately. Not the chemistry issues, at least to our knowledge again, but financial issues, I'm assuming, just because things haven't <laughs> worked out that way, but definitely players leaving. And now again, we hear that there is potential conflict between the front office and the coaching staff. Like I said, I have no idea what it actually is about, what the issue is, and who wants what. Like, I don't know. I just said my assumption, just using basketball knowledge in general, is that I feel like it has something to do with, like, wanting certain players or paying certain players and, like, stuff to do with the roster. That's really just what I'm assuming. 100% assumptions. No facts, nothing behind it. So don't take it and run with it. <laughs> there is nothing to base it off of. It's just as an opinion as it can get. Congratulations to Jamal Murray though, because he did earn this contract, but it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with Denver, especially after this season, if they don't get the success that they want. And if you watch this page, you know that I try not to call for people to be traded because I, you know, I just don't like the idea that it's not like, it's not my business in a way, but at the same time, this is a basketball page, so I try to be realistic. And funny enough, I actually made a video a few months ago talking about the trade that Denver needs to make. And I thought that they could potentially trade Michael Porter Jr. soon because he's still young enough to have value to a lot of teams in the league, meaning like someone like a Drew Holiday, for example. Great player, very valuable player, but more so valuable for someone like the Boston Celtics a team that's competing. He's not as valuable for someone like the Charlotte Hornets unless they want to just bring him in to help develop the young guys because they're not going to be competing for a championship, at least not right now. So it wouldn't even make sense for them to give up assets to get Drew Holiday. But Michael Porter Jr. is old enough to help teams compete for a championship, but young enough to still fit in with a team that is not there yet. It's just a matter of what his value is to other teams around the league. But I was saying, I feel like if things don't work out this season, he may unfortunately be the one that they trade because obviously they're not trading Jokic, like I said. <laughs> and I don't think they're trading Jamal Murray. And I think Michael Porter Jr. would have, not that he would have the most value. Obviously Jokic would have the most value around the league, but the most value in terms of someone they're willing to give up. So we'll see what happens, but congratulations again to Jamal Murray. This wasn't supposed to, you know, take away from his accomplishment because getting $208 million is an accomplishment.